This video will go over how to use Family Tree Excel's Ancestry.com Extract Workbook. This file is an Excel macro enabled workbook that allows you to easily compile all the data from Ancestry.com record images into an Excel table. With the table, you can filter and sort the data however you want, giving you a deeper understanding of the records and associated people and places that can also assist with breaking down potential research walls. This workbook allows you to bypass all the formatting and paste special requirements that would be necessary if you did this manually. Please note that this workbook will currently only work with Ancestry.com records and requires macro enabled versions of Excel to work. Ancestry.com allows you to view their record images. For example, this is the 1900 U.S. Census for the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. You will see this particular image collection has 30 pages we can navigate through. If you click on the Person button at the bottom, the index for the selected image page will then be displayed. This index is a transcription of that image's details. Transferring this index data to Excel will give you the ability to do more in-depth research and have customization capabilities that a regular Ancestry search may not provide. To manually transfer the data, make sure the index pane is visible, and then do a Select All via Control-A on your keyboard for PC users. With everything selected, then copy the data via Control-C on the keyboard. You can then paste this data into Excel using special formatting. From here you have to delete all the rows that you don't want and then format accordingly to get it into a table format. You can then repeat this process for as many pages as you want, formatting and adjusting every time you paste it into Excel. With the Ancestry.com Extract Workbook, however, you can automate the entire Excel end of the process to just a click of the button. When acquired, the workbook will be delivered in a zip file. All you need to do is extract the workbook from the zip file to the location of your choice. Once again, this is a macro-enabled workbook so be sure to enable content and editing if prompted or this will not work. When you first open the workbook, you will be on the record worksheet. This worksheet will be the only worksheet you need for the macros to work. At the top of the page you will find five buttons, paste, delete, clear, export, and new. These buttons are pretty much self-explanatory, but each will be discussed in detail shortly. Also at the top is the Family Tree Excel logo. You can click on this logo to come back to this video as a reference to any topic if you get stuck. Also near the top of the page are green and blue fields. These cells should populate automatically with the relevant data when you click on Paste. You should never edit the data in the green fields to avoid any VBA errors. You can edit the blue fields to anything you want. Depending on the records, sometimes the title and location may populate incorrectly. If so, you will have to update that manually. Finally, you will see a pattern red line in row 7. Do not enter anything into this row to avoid errors. Error handling was built into the macros, but to avoid any user errors, don't insert or delete any columns into the worksheet. You can see the Excel tips for adding columns to a table later. Don't insert any rows into the worksheet above line 9. Don't rename the worksheet at the bottom. Don't delete or edit any of the buttons or logos at the top. Don't edit any of the green cells. And once again, don't enter any data into or modify row number 7, which is in red. If you do get a VBA error, just hit end and retry. If the error persists, 
Please comment below or contact me and I'll do my best to resolve the issue as soon as possible. Also remember that the data does not save automatically for Excel, so be sure to save your work periodically. The main option you will use is the green paste button. You will click this button to add all the images index data to the workbook. For this to work properly, you must do the following on Ancestry.com's image page. Click the person button to display the index. Make sure you select all of the page using Control A on your keyboard. If this does not work, make sure you click somewhere in the index pane first, then hit Control A again. With everything selected, then copy the data using Control C on the keyboard. Now you can go back to the Excel workbook and click on the paste button and all the work will be done for you. The initial paste of data will generate headers and a table starting in row 8. All the columns will auto fit to the headers and a freeze pane exists allowing you to scroll up and down while keeping the headers visible. The image page number from Ancestry should automatically be added to the table and to the green field label, Image Numbers Added. This is helpful in case you forget what pages you added so far. Also in the green fields is the total number of images added and the number of people or rows added to the table so far. You should not edit any of these green cells. In the blue cells, there should be the image collection title and the location details of the collection. This comes directly from the Ancestry.com website. The source is always Ancestry.com by default. You can edit these blue fields if you like or if the data did not transfer properly. To add another page, you can go back to the image collection on Ancestry and then go to the next or previous page using these arrows. Once on the new page, all the data should remain highlighted. So now you just have to press Control C to copy it. Then go back to the Excel workbook again and click on Paste. The image number is added to the green field again and the index is added to the existing table. You can repeat this process as many times as you want, allowing you to quickly extract all the data once you get the hang of it. If you try to paste the same image data twice, you will get a prompt that this is a duplicate and then you can decide how to proceed from there. If you copy anything besides a valid Ancestry.com image index page and then you try to paste, you will be alerted that something went wrong and nothing will be inserted. This helps keep your existing data protected. This process should work for any Ancestry.com image collection that has the Index Person button. However, keep in mind that the data provided will depend on Ancestry's transcription accuracy and their index provided. You should create a new workbook for every new image collection you want to analyze since the headers are not universal to all records. This process will not work if you just copy the view record page or search results, at least not at this time. The next option is the blue delete button. Clicking this will allow you to delete a specific image page from the data. You may want to do this if you add the image data from a page that was not useful or by mistake. When you click it, you will be prompted to enter what image number to delete. The image number must match one of the numbers in the green field to be recognized. This is why you should not edit the green cells at all. If a valid image number is added, then all the data from that page will be deleted from the table below and then everything will update accordingly. Note that this option will clear any existing filters in place and the action cannot be undone. The next option to go over is the black export button. Clicking this will transfer all the data over to a brand new Excel workbook. 
This new workbook will not contain any macros. Therefore, all the limitations mentioned before will no longer apply. You can now insert, delete, and modify the data however you please without fear of any VBA errors. You should only use this option once you finish adding the image data from the Ancestry.com collection. The next option is the red clear button. Clicking this will delete all the data from the table and fields. This is essentially a reset button. This action cannot be undone if chosen. The final option is the purple new button. Clicking this will create a new extract workbook that will be blank by default. After clicking it, enter a desired file name and then the new workbook will be saved where the existing file is located. This will have no effect on the current workbook open. If you have any questions, or if you want to add or customize something, please comment below or email mike at familytreexcel at gmail.com. You can also visit familytreexcel.com for more details on this workbook and all the other Family Tree Excel products.